So what is actually the best programming language for cybersecurity pen testing? Before we get into that, I would say if you haven't watched the previous video in this series, go ahead and check that one out first. It's going to really explain a lot of the concepts that are going to lead into this video uh, naturally. So one thing that we have to understand is that all these programming languages, you know, there's so many out there. They're all just tools. That's all they are, right? If you imagine uh, tools like hammers and wrenches and things like that, they all serve their own purpose, right? They all have certain use cases, things that they are made for, designed for. For example, if I need to build a, a board or whatever, connect two boards together, I could just grab a nail, grab my hammer and hammer it in. But if push came to shove and I had to use a wrench to do that, I could still get the job done. It just wouldn't be the best tool for the job. Now, as a beginner, like I was saying in the other video, you don't want to try to learn multiple programming languages at the same time for the most part, right? You want to just focus in on one language and you want to go as far and in, in deep into that language as you can, because once you learn one programming language, it's very easy to learn another. That was a little synopsis of the previous video. But so with that being said, it's more worth it to pick a language that's going to cover the majority of your of your needs and just know that whatever you pick, it's fine. It will be able to get the job done. Now, unless you pick like HTML or something that's just like for displaying stuff on a web page, right? If, if something can't do everything, right? It's very, very few and far between, right? The vast majority, I would say like 98% of the languages can do pretty much anything that you would need to do. So just keep that in mind. But with that being said, the most optimal way, if you want to pick a language, ask yourself what you need to, you know, what is it that you need to do, right? Just like if you were building hardware, what would you need to do? And that would determine if you could only pick one tool, would you pick a hammer? Would you pick a wrench, right? It's kind of like that. So if you want to de develop exploits, that's one thing, right? If you want to, um, if you're just a programmer that needs to build websites, that's another thing. If you want to test network protocols, you know, whatever it is that you, that you need to do, take that into account. It's going to help you decide. If you're unsure, that's completely fine. My recommendation, if you're unsure, go with Python amazing general purpose language. It can do pretty much everything that I mentioned. So the main advantage of Python is that it has write speed. The write speed is really fast. Uh, what do I mean by write speed? Well, the syntax of the language, like what you have to actually type to execute the code, very simple, very simple, very fast to type. It doesn't, it doesn't require a lot of typing, like something like Java or C sharp, you know, those type of languages, right? Uh, it handles a lot of the stuff for you. Like for example, on those other languages, you have to tell it the data type. You have to say, this is an integer, this is a string, this is, and if you don't, then they error out. But with Python, it's smart enough to know what it, you don't have to tell it what it is. It'll actually be able to tell just by what the data is. So if you have a variable X and it's equal to five, you don't have to tell it that it's an integer. It'll know that that's a number basically. And the reason that it's able to do this is Python is known as an interpreted language. I don't want to get too in the weeds for you guys that are completely new, but basically there are compiled languages and interpreted languages. Okay. A, a compiled language is basically where you have your code uh, in a text file and it gets compiled into byte code. So binary, so zeros and ones so that the computer can run it. And then there's also what are known as interpreted languages where all this, all of the compilation, all this stuff is happening at runtime. So there are disadvantages to Python as well. So because it's having to do all this heavy lifting during runtime, it has significantly slower runtime speeds than a compiled language like, you know, Java or C or something like that. So that is the downside. But another downside as well is that it is a lot larger you know, it takes up a lot more space than something like C. So that's the advantage of like having those compiled binaries is that as well dependencies, right? So if you're using other modules and stuff, you're going to have to have that installed on your system. Whereas if you're using a compiled language, then it's going to handle all of that when you compile the binary and all you need to do is transfer the binary over and it already has everything it needs and it can just run. So we'll get to why that could, that is one factor that could actually sway you one language or another. But as in general, like if it's your first language, just go for Python is what I would say. Now, a lot of the limitations that I mentioned, except for that last one have zero, they don't matter at all to pen testers. 
because we, as pen testers, we don't care about runtime speed. We don't really care about run speed for the most part. Now, if we were, uh, when I say that, like Python, you can, there's ways to make Python fast enough for anything we would want to do. When I'm talking about like run speed mattering, I'm talking about if you're developing like a payment processor, IO, you know, something that needs really fast IO or something like that, then yeah, speed is going to matter. You, you probably don't want to use Python in that scenario. If you're talking about space limitations, right? We said the size was large of Python files. You know, if we're trying to develop some code that's going to run on a microprocessor or something like that, then yeah, we, we probably don't want to try and use Python for that. You know, C would be much better in that case, or maybe even Rust. But yeah, those languages, we'll, we'll save those for that situation. But we're not really generally ever doing that as pen testers. So I would say you could kind of write off a lot of those downsides of the language. So when it comes to, you know, things like Windows, right? The problem with running this on, you know, in our pen testing, if we're trying to use this for exploits and stuff like that, is that the dependency thing does become an issue. And for example, right, if you're trying to run some Python code on Windows, it's not installed on Windows by default for one thing like it is on Linux. So you'd actually have to install Python on the server. Now, there are ways to create Python like frozen binaries and stuff like that. Uh, but then, yeah, there, there's also some other limitations as as well. It's just a lot easier to bypass antivirus if you're using C sharp, something like C sharp, right? Because then you can use the native windows APIs and native, um, and a lot of the C sharp stuff flies under the radar because developers are using C sharp all the time. And so it's a lot easier for a stealth purpose. So if you're doing red teaming and stuff like that, C sharp is definitely a really good language to learn. Maybe you could still learn Python first and then just circle back and learn C sharp. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do in this series. Since I already know Python and a few other programming languages as well, I am actually going to show you guys, you know, from zero learning C sharp and how you can actually, if this is your second language as well, you can see some ways that I incorporate the fact that I know another programming language to help me learn this one even faster because I'm a complete beginner at C sharp, just to be completely honest with everyone uh, watching this video. But if you do want to get started with Python, you're completely new to programming, or if you have some experience and you just haven't learned any Python yet, go ahead and check out my series, Black Hat Python. Not only will it teach you Python, but it will teach you how to develop security tools and, and do pen testing using Python. So it's a really cool series and definitely one that I'm going to be resuming pretty soon on this channel. And then in the next video, we're going to actually get into the technical part where you're going to see me learning C sharp, uh, from the beginning. So definitely look forward to that if you're interested and I'll see you right over in those Python videos.